Hey everybody, it's Claire. Welcome back to another Web Dev Wednesday. Today, we are moving on from HTML and CSS to JavaScript. And I intend this video to be just a quick overview of the basic concepts you will need to know before going in and learning more complex functionality using JavaScript. Um, but JavaScript is a scripting language. It adds a lot of functionality and um, dynamic effects and interaction with the user on a web page. Um, so it's sort of the next step beyond just your markup and then your styles. It is the dynamic functionality that JavaScript is pretty much the industry standard to learn. So just to get started, these are the concepts of JavaScript that I'm going to try and cover real quick today. And we will continue revisiting these, of course, as we um, get further into the topic. But these are just some terms that you will need to understand, as well as understanding how they interact with each other before moving on. So we're going to be covering variables, which is like a container for some content. So um, the content of variables can change. Um, it's just a way to refer to um, elements that may take up more code space with just like a short quick name and it's usually semantic so it helps uh, readability in your code. Um, events are things like clicking and scrolling and things happening on your page that JavaScript can then react to or you can attach some functionality to different events. Um, and then functions are a way to put a bunch of code into this function, which you name, and then you can refer to it in your code a bunch of times or here and there or attach it to events. And again, it's another way to um, prevent repeating code and refer to a functionality with just a usually a semantic name that makes it clear what is going to be doing. And I'm going to touch on conditional statements, which are usually part of functions. So conditional is just if else. So we're going to test a condition. So if something is a certain way, do this, else, do something else. And this will, again, make sense as we get going. Okay, so this is just a little page I put together. You can see in the markup here, we have a button and we have a div with the ID of change me. And then over here, okay, and then you see we link to this style sheet, which is just targeting this change me div, making it a square, giving it a little bit of a margin, um, centering it and giving it a background color. And I just um, centered everything on the page. And then down here at the bottom, this is something new. This is a script tag where we are linking to an external MyScripts.js file, JavaScript file, which over here is empty. And you load a script at the bottom of your body tag as opposed to in the head tag because Typically, you're going to be referring to your HTML down here, and some JavaScript will load with the page, and you want it to be after things that it's referring to. So it's just a standard practice to load your script in the bottom, and it uses a source attribute as opposed to href. But here's our page. It's just a non-functional button with a box. So to get started, we're going to assign some variables in our JavaScript file. And the way you declare a variable is just var and then the name of the variable. So let's do a variable called button and a variable called box. Okay, now I'm going to set this equal to, I could just leave it at this. JavaScript ends with a semicolon and then later we could do, you know, button equals and set a value in here. But I'm going to declare what this button is, what's going to be inside the variable, what the variable will be right at the start. And this brings in something else that I want to talk about, which is property accessors. So kind of how selectors in CSS sort of dig into our document and grab what we want to style. Um, property accessors do the same thing with JavaScript, but they're done in the dot notation. So what I mean by that is document dot and then whatever we put after this is going to be what we're targeting here. So um, JavaScript has some methods which are just built in actions that they do. Um, they're very useful. I'm going to use the query selector method and methods have parentheses after their name, same way functions do, which we will get into. So the query selector method, you just put in here what what HTML element, basically what tag you want to grab. 
we are going to grab the button right here. So we do query selector button. And now this button in HTML has been assigned to the variable button in JavaScript. This just means we can access that button and do something to it within our JavaScript code without typing out the whole selector. Okay, and so for the box, we're going to do something similar. We're going to use a property accessor, but the method we're going to use instead of query selector is get element by ID. This is another method in JavaScript that pretty self-explanatory. It gets the element in our HTML that it's linked to by its ID. And remember the div that is our box has the ID of change me. So in the parentheses here of our method, we just put change me. Now this div is in our variable in our JavaScript and we can do things with them. So what we want to do is when we click this button, we want this box to change color. So we have to add an event, first of all, to the button. We just want to add the on click event. So when the button's clicked, that's an event that then we want the code to do something. So we're going to target a button again, on click. This is the event we are adding. We want to set it to equal function. We're going to call our function change color. And remember how I said um, methods have parentheses after them? Functions are always, this is the name of the function, and these parentheses here make this a function. So we know we're calling a function. And this will make sense when we're calling it somewhere else in the code, not right after declaring it. So we're declaring a function called change color. And then after the name with the parentheses, we open and close our brackets and then the code we want to execute when we call the change color function go in here. So what we want to happen when we click our button and run the change color function is change the color of our box. So what we do in here is grab our box, access the property style. We want to access our background and set it to blue. So box and then this is getting into if this were an HTML element we could add a style property to it and set background to blue in it so it's sort of just without changing the markup going in and changing something about it dynamically so if we save this and refresh our page I click the button and the box turns blue so but you don't have to have the on click in the JavaScript. What's cool about on click is you can set it to this property here. So we can set the on click of our button to change me. See, when we're referencing a function, that's all you have to do the name of the function with the opening and closing parentheses. And if we were to set the on click here, we'd go into our JavaScript. We don't need to set it here and in the HTML. So what I would do is just remove the on click function from the JavaScript because we attached it in the HTML. And now it should work the same way. Oh, the function's called change color. So now it works the same way, whether you are setting this event in the HTML or in the JavaScript. Okay, so I mentioned conditional statements at the beginning. I want to use a conditional statement in this change color function to check the color of the box, and then it'll be a kind of toggle effect. So the anatomy of a conditional if else statement is if, check this condition, execute this code. So if whatever we put in here, do this, else do something else. So we are checking if box style background equals red, and you'll notice I did two equal signs here. This is a comparison operator that means equals. So it's two as opposed to just one, this would be setting something. So we're checking, not setting, we're using two. There are other comparison operators such as not equal to, the exclamation point is a negation symbol. Um, there's also, you know, 
greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and this is identical, which is slightly different from equals, but we're just going to use equals for now because we don't need to worry about identical. So this conditional statement is checking if our box background is red, and if it is, we want to change it to blue. So I'm going to cut what we had already written and paste it in here. So if our box background is red, change it to blue, else let's change it to red. Box style background equals because we are setting it. When we check, we use our comparison operator of double equal sign. When we're setting, we just use a single. Okay, so if we save this and refresh, if it's red, it changes to blue. And now it's blue, if we click it, it should check if it's red, it's not, so it's going to run the else and change it back to red. There you have it. That's just a really quick overview of the basic tenets of JavaScript. You've got a little bit of variable knowledge now. You've got events and functions and even some conditional statements and a couple other terms. So hopefully you found this helpful. Um, we're gonna continue getting more advanced with this for now, but thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful and I will see you all next week. Bye you guys.